so Psalm 2 looms large in the discussion of politics and the kingdom of God versus the beast or the or Rome or whatever. Psalm 2 is this uh, famous psalm where it starts out, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves up against Yahweh and his anointed, the, the Davidic figure or the Messiah figure, right? Mm, okay. And they say, let's stop, let's burst their bonds apart, cast away their cords from us. So it's like, all, it's picturing all these nations saying, oh, we don't want Yahweh's king to rule over us. We get rid of, rid of them. But then God laughs. He thinks this is, what a joke, right? <laughs> Good, you're going to try to rebel against my, me and my anointed king. Good luck, Good luck with that. And then God says, as for me, I have set my, my king on, on Zion, my holy hill. And then Yahweh says to me, to the, the implied speaker here, you are my son, the king, the anointed king. Today I have begotten you, I become your father. So ask me and I will make the nations your heritage, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron, dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So then he turns back to the rest of the nations that are trying to get out of, you know, to rebel against this. So kings, be smart and serve Yahweh with fear and kiss the sun, bow down to the sun and and uh, submit to the, to the messianic ruler. Blessed hmm. are all who take refuge in him. And that psalm looms, looms all over the place. So in Acts 4, hmm. the apostles just get persecuted by, um, they had just gotten beaten up, I think, as as kind of tended to happen. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that seems <laughs> just like, a little bit par for the course uh, yeah. in, in the book of Acts. So um, Peter and John were called before the Sanhedrin, and mm -hmm. then they got released, and then they, uh, they go back to their prayer meeting or whatever. And in, in Acts 4... The people, they got together after they heard the report of their persecution, they're getting beaten up or whatever. And they pray Psalm 2. Hmm. They say, Sovereign Lord, who made heaven and earth, through the mouth of our father David, you said by the Holy Spirit, why do the Gentiles rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and his anointed. And then they say, truly in this city, they were gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. What they're doing mm. is they're recognizing in the way that they're being mistreated mm. and in the way that Jesus had just been uh, killed and then, of course, rose again. But they're recognizing, oh, that's that's this, right? When they saw Herod and they see uh, Pilate and, and the Jewish leaders conspiring against God's anointed, mm -hmm. they're saying, yeah, that's that's Psalm 2. And now they recognize our being persecuted is a continuation of that. Like God's still, mm -hmm. the, the nations are still raging against the rule of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And and this same Psalm appears in Revelation 11. Oh. Yeah, it's, okay. it's multiple times. Interesting, interesting. I think. No, that, that I was not aware of. Yeah, it's it's kind of big. So Revelation 11 after the seventh trumpet. So this sort of represents um, uh, the uh, the final sort of, the final culmination of all things. Mm. The seventh angel blows his trumpet and the voices in heaven say, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah and he shall reign forever and ever. Right, God, Jesus has finally mm. taken the throne on earth as it is in heaven. And the elders fall on their faces and they say, we give thanks to you who was and who is, for you have taken your power and begun to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath came and the time for the dead to be rewarded, etc. And it's recognizing, mm. you know, the end of that. So Jesus at the, at, at the end of, after his resurrection, the end of Matthew's gospel says, all authority has been given in heaven and on earth to me, right? Mm. He recognizes that in his, he's been, he's conquered. He has overcome. Uh, he is now the, the, resurrected messiah who whom so in the beginning of matthew's gospel the devil tempts him with all the kingdoms of the world right if you'll bow yeah. down and worship he's yeah. like because the devil knows that that is jesus rightful inheritance mm -hmm. right he's the devil presumably has read psalm 2 and he says he's basically offering jesus a shortcut yeah yeah it's almost like you can have this right now if you, you just have it right you know, now yeah or you could do it the hard way yeah. right the suffering way the death Ooh. way, right? Hmm. And Jesus says, no, I will trust that God will give me the kingdoms of the world, mm -hmm. but 
there's for him, there's like two options. He could bow down to the dragon and get it that way with no suffering involved. Or he mm-hmm. could fo- he could wander around and suffer and eventually be killed and God would raise him up and give it. And that's the route he chose, mm-hmm. right? That is so, but that means a life where the nations were raging against him, mm-hmm. right? God vindicated him. Mm-hmm. Um, so this psalm and the way Jesus received his authority over the nations becomes a pattern for the rest of the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it becomes, a, I think, a, a part of the lens that we look at politics through. Because mm-hmm. I think that temptation that Jesus had in, in, uh, by the devil um, is a very similar temptation to to one that some of us face in the in the states right now, mm. right? 